How low will the Bitcoin price go? You, uh, an awful lot of guys, uh, an awful lot of people in my audience, uh, are they've invested in cryptocurrency. You're sitting there, and you're holding a bag of cryptocurrency. I, I don't know particularly what type of cryptocurrencies you're holding. Uh, some of you have Digibyte. Some of you have Litecoin, like me. I'm into Litecoin. Uh, some of you guys might. It uh, doesn't really matter what altcoin you have. You're watching these prices decline, and you're worried because you're seeing the net uh, amount of money you have in your investment dwindle down lower. You know, and it's, some of you might even be thinking about letting go of your coins. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you what you can't see behind the scenes. There's big plans. The the world leaders. The leaders of the central banks and everything, they know that cryptocurrency is something that is, is unbeatable. It is the currency for the modern age. It is the currency that can be transferred across the internet. Uh, it, it, when, when the cryptocurrencies finally get scaled so that they can be uh, transferred easily and effectively... Uh, last night I was doing research on the uh, new Lightning Network. Night, the Lightning Network, right while we speak, is being established, and it's every day it's capable of more and more transactions. Uh, the people behind the scenes, big money behind the scenes, it's invested in cryptocurrencies and are pushing for cryptocurrencies. To be used worldwide because they're deeply invested in it. They're not really worried right now. It's the smaller investors out there right now, and they're mostly the ones who listen to my channel. They're worried right now, and they're a little bit like off. They're like, oh man, look, the price is down again, you know. And 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 they're a bit upset. Well, first off, let's open up the charts and take a look at what's going on with cryptocurrency right now today. As we speak right here, we open the charts, and, and let's take a look at the Bitcoin price. Uh, and what we see is, as we see the, 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 the price, it, right now it's in a little upswing. We've got a little uptick, but uh, we've had this, this waterfall event. Uh, the price slid down, and this is what's got, because it broke down through support, this is what's got an awful lot of people upset. Uh, the smaller investors. But I'm going to tell you what. The big guys behind the scenes who are making plans for the future of the cryptocurrency space, they're, they're trans transferring from the regular banking industry, and they're, they're, they're going into this new cryptographic industry, and they're, they're setting their positions. They're getting ready behind the starting gate for this. They don't think in short term like, 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 uh, like the common average guy who's invested in cryptocurrency they're thinking long term and they see where this is going to be five ten years out into the future uh how this is going to actually take over and these coins are actually positioning themselves to take over but what's really gonna set all of this in motion is when this next recession starts and the world's central banks have to go back to accommodative monetary policy. That's what's going to trigger the next huge rise. And it's not going to be a rise like we saw before where Bitcoin shot up to $20,000. No, this time it's going to be something much more massive. It's going to be a transfer of wealth from the fiat currency system into this new digital currency system that's already established itself. And so the real big shots behind the scenes they're not too worried about these downs in price. All they see this as is, is, is a buying opportunities. So now at the start of the show, I said, hey, you know what? How low will cryptocurrencies go? Well, right now we're going into a deflationary period. And the reason why is, is because the world's central banks have went into what they call tightening. They're tightening monetary policy. It means that they're pulling in their belts. They're cracking down. And they are eliminating money from the system. 
They're trying to get things set for this next recession that's coming so that they can. They've already told everybody what they're going to do. They already told everybody that, that, that these accommodative, the accommodative monetary policy and the tightening policy is data dependent. They've already told you this. The Federal Reserve has already told you this. It's data dependent. Now, what do you think is going to happen when the next, next recession starts? Well, the data is going to change, and they've already told you it's data dependent. So what we're going to have is we're going to see a phenomenal change back to accommodative policy, meaning that they are going to, uh, instead of tightening their belts, then they're just going to go and they're going to splurge. When they splurge next time, confidence is going to be lost in the fiat currencies, and this is going to be explosive to the cryptocurrencies. The big shots behind the cryptocurrencies, if you track the trail, trail back, the trail of breadcrumbs, it's going to lead you to the central banks. They're already investing in what's going to be the next big thing. They're just not telling you about it. And they're looking long term. They're not thinking in the short term. So we got to go through this deflationary period right now. And not only a deflationary period caused by the world central bank's tightening policies, but also Bitcoin has entered into a bar, a bear market. And the reason why is, is because it went up too fast, too high, too quick. And now what's happened is it's went into a bear market and so we have bearish sentiment. We have an awful lot of people out there who are selling off their cryptocurrencies in the United States in particular to, to help pay their taxes uh, under, under uh, I think it's capital gains taxes or whatever that they have on, on, on the uh, cryptocurrencies themselves. So we have sellers in the market who are selling these coins in, in order to uh, pay taxes. And this is having an effect on, on the cryptocurrency market in general as well. So we got all these factors coming together that suppress the price of cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency is not worried. Its prices went down. But again, the big question at the start of this show is I said, how low will she go? So I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, she's broke down through support. She's at 55.86 as we speak right now. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see the bear market continue for a bit longer as long as we're in this deflationary funk until the central bank turns around. But there is a possibility that when the world starts to crash, if Bitcoin can get a little bit of momentum and the other cryptocurrencies can get a little bit of momentum, that they might do rather well during the crash. It all depends on the sentiment in the marketplace at the time of the crash. But I'm going to set a bottom for you guys how low I think Bitcoin could go. Right? Uh, in, in the worst case scenario of this economic malaise until things shift in the opposite direction. I think that Bitcoin could actually go under 2000 bucks. Now, I'm going to tell you, from here all the way down, however low it goes, you're not going to incur that loss unless you sell. As soon as you sell, you've incurred the loss. Because why I say that is, is because on the other side of this, when the economies change and the money starts coming back into the system, when the back is broken of the not only the Federal Reserve but all the other central banks and they have to go back and they have to actually shift and change gears because they've said it's data dependent. When the data changes, they have to change gears. That's when cryptocurrency is going to change gears too and go into the bull market of all bull markets. I believe what we're seeing... And what we're going to see in cryptocurrency is going to be the bull market of all bull markets. So it doesn't matter on the way down here where you sell. If you sell, you're going to incur your loss. And at that point, when it goes into the bull market of all bull markets, uh, you're going to have to buy in back in at a higher price than what you sold at. And uh, I'm speaking this from experience. 
Uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I don't care how low this stuff goes. I'm just going to buy more and HODL what I got. Because I know that now this is the future of money. And there are simple reasons why this is the future of money. First off, if you've got a, a, a silver coin or a gold coin, I mean, I love silver. I love gold. I think it's the greatest stuff in the world. But let's see you send it half the way, halfway around the world in less than a second. Can't be done. In fact, they'll stop you at the border with your gold coin and they'll confiscate it. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah, if you've got one little small, tiny little gold coin that's only like one gram size, they'll probably let you through with that if you put it in with, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and let you get away with that. But I'm talking about if you've got a little bag full of gold coins, if you've got like, uh, say, a dozen gold coins in a little bag, they're going to take your little gold bag away from you. And they're going to they're gonna keep it. They're going to keep it. They're just going to say, oh, money launderer, another money launderer. They might even put you in prison for crying out loud, you know. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But you can send cryptocurrency halfway around the world almost instantaneously. It's not a problem. This is the email of money. And I've seen shows on here when email was first coming out, and it was just a novelty. And some of the people that saw it first coming out, and it was a novelty, they said, well, this will never go anywhere. Because this is just a novelty. They couldn't see the potential. This is the same thing. This is the email of money. This is the internet of money. Now, this means microtransactions. That's what cryptocurrency is going to mean to the world, to the average person out there. If you go online, you want to you wanna tip somebody, say. You tip them a fraction of a penny. Uh, not a problem. Uh, you know, these... They got multiple currencies, and each one of these currencies, not not Bitcoin yet, but uh, because the Lightning Network is not fully established, but on an awful lot of these cryptocurrencies, they're already capable of thousands of transactions per second. And uh, eventually, Bitcoin will be capable of 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 transactions per second at a much cheaper costs than it is now but i don't think bitcoin ultimately is going to be used for that purpose uh what bitcoin is going to be used for is savings it's going to be the 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 premier coin and this is what i believe this is my personal belief it's going to be the premier coin and it's going to be a store of value it's going to be a long-term uh store of value so ultimately, uh, it's going to be like if you were having a tug of war between two sides, Bitcoin is the anchor man. He's the man that, that, that's the big fat guy on the, end of the, on the end of the rope that really anchors everybody down. That's what Bitcoin is. Uh, that's, where all, that's where a lot of the money's going to be. Uh, we're probably looking at the end, in the end, of the Bitcoin dominance probably dwindling back to probably around 20% staying there. Right now it's over 50%. Uh, but you're going to find that the market cap of Bitcoin alone, by the time it gets to be 20% dominance in the industry, the market cap of Bitcoin alone is probably going to be 100 times what it is now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so what does that mean if that only represents 20% instead of 50% like it does now? It means tremendous growth in the cryptocurrency industry in general so what you need to do is you need to wait for it that's what i'm doing i see this deflation i'm thinking to myself now that bitcoin broke down below its its uh its support levels that it's going to very possibly continue to break down below support and uh, it's going to probably put a bottom in uh, pretty darn low. Uh, I got to have a sense for this market uh, along with world events. So I'm going to keep watching on it. And I'm going to let you guys know when I think it's reached a bottom. Well, actually, that's not what I'm going to let you know. 
I'm going to let you know because I'm going to tell you when I'm going to go out and buy some. When I think it's at bottom. You know, I don't care if I got to sell my car. When I think that this stuff is at bottom, rock bottom price. And it's not right now. I don't think it's at rock bottom yet. I'm really, honest to God, I don't. I'm not buying yet. I'm just going to tell you when I'm buying. When I think it's at rock bottom. Now, I bought a little bit on the way down. But I'm cost averaging. I'm really saving my powder. Saving my money. For when I think it's at real rock bottom price. That's when I plan on buying in. I'm going to let you guys in my audience know when. I'm going to try to hit the. I'm going to try to hit the bottom. I'm telling you the truth. I know it's hard. To, that's awful hard to do. But I'm going to try to hit the bottom of this thing. Uh, because I truly believe that on the other side of the rainbow, that the people that buy in on this at the bottom, the real bottom bottom, are going to see explosive gains on what uh, on on the on the amount of uh, of what this is worth on the other side of this. So listen. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye, guys.